Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series and Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this episode we begin with a couple more Venus probe missions. Uh, we're launching the backups just in case. And then we'll move on to other things. We need to fulfill a docking contract. And then I'm going to start testing some hardware for a future moon landing. Though for the moon landing we really need the J2 I feel. At least uh, unless I want to upgrade the pad to more than 600 tons, which means increasing the rollout cost. And the rollout cost is substantial when you have a capsule on it. Uh, we're talking about the just a 600 ton rocket with a capsule right now. A spacecraft is uh, about 160,000 to roll out. So, and then we're probably gonna need, you know, another one. <laughs> you know, it's at least gotta take two launches. So, yeah, actually uh, it's interesting how the rollout cost ends up making it not very efficient to uh, have a really... I mean, it reduces the efficiency of having a larger rocket, not necessarily completely eliminating it, but anyway, um, here we go, ignition. And launch. I have developed sort of a tug or transfer stage, well not really a transfer stage, it's like, it's more like a tug, it's more like an Agena. I've called it Regina. It's not very good though, because uh, I don't have the engines that I want on it. A lot of engines have sort of grown in size from previous versions, like the RD-58, actually we still have the old RD-58 which is somewhat smaller physically, but the one I keep using is physically quite large, and so it doesn't fit the way it used to on things. And that's interesting because I, I gotta see, take a look at Block D sometime and see whether it's really supposed to be that huge. I, I, I seem to recall the RD-58 on Block D being somewhat trimmer. Maybe not as efficient, I don't know. I, I get the feeling that this model was based on, like, the engines on Buran or something. Which obviously had, well, probably had larger nozzles. I don't know. We also need to give the Proton engines more of a workout. The RD-0210 uh, and the RD-253. Make sure test flight is uh, happier with those engines before we use them for crewed missions. Certainly the RD-253 is probably going to be our go-to launch engine. F1 just doesn't have the ISP to compete. Not while we have pad restrictions. And cost-wise also not so good. I don't know how reliability is for the F1 compared to the RD-253, but then again, having a whole bunch of engines sort of helps. Date-wise, we are currently at June 1st, 1967, so we're talking about two years if we want to beat Apollo 11. I feel like I should have probably gone a bit more steeply. Ah, yeah. Ah, that was my mistake. I was too shallow. Oh well. I don't suppose there's... Speaking of the RD-58... Um... Oh no, there's the AJ-190. AJ-10-190. Um, right, well you're not gonna be able to save yourself. We could... Save the probe. I've, I've done this before, haven't I? Yeah, probably. Well, it does not look like early television camera can be done in the atmosphere either. That's quite a shock. I mean, a lot of good science gets done in the atmosphere. Oh, uh, temperature scan flying over water of an Earth. Okay, let's get that back. Recoup some of our money. 
And uh, we'll do the last uh, mission to Venus and then proceed with other things. It's about time that we just hold off and then wait and see whether the existing missions will work. And then if they don't work, we'll launch some more. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll toss up the last one we're building right now. Okay, so the previous one was an atmospheric probe. I believe this one is an orbiter. Uh, but it's the same rocket, so I really need to launch it a little bit steeper than last time. Yep, definitely an orbiter, no heat shield. So with that, ignition. And launch. I'm, I'm not sure why the previous one had to be launched on a larger launch pad than this one. It didn't let me launch that one on the 150 ton launch pad. Even though there should have been margin for it. Okay, let's reset. I'm not taking any chances. Definitely going steeply here. I definitely thought about removing procedural fairings for everything because of the weird fairing shaders, but it occurred to me that I wouldn't be able to open any of the craft files if I did. Um, because the fairings added by procedural fairings for everything would be gone. So, I don't know. And of course these are the tool fairings, but I'm willing to pay for additional toolings if necessary, but... Not being able to open any of the older craft files would be a pain. Well, I probably overdid the steepness this, this time. We'll see. Well, at least it lit properly. It looks like we're going to need the AJ-10 to complete orbit for us. Okay, separation. Okay, we are in orbit, thankfully. And now let's just deploy everything and I'll plot for Venus. Well, this is sort of disturbing. I was pretty sure that we had pretty good transfers to Venus last time, and I lined up the same way with the moon, basically. Yeah, it's giving me this 4,970, well, include capture burn, I don't know. Well, heck, that was easy. I mean, it didn't take me any effort, it just took a few seconds to plot that. 3,427, it's not a mid-course cha uh, plane change sort of situation where I understand that MechJeb can't get that. MechJet was just flat out lying to me. I mean, there's an uh, obvious transfer opportunity here. And uh, very cheap. 3427 is quite affordable. Yeah, that, that'll do fine. Um, let's verify that we can make orbit once we get there. It's not a long transfer either. Yeah, wow, that's a nice mild burn to make orbit. 1,600. We'll have like 2,000 left over at the end. We can get rid of that burn for now though. Okay, let's do this. Oh shucks, I left us sort of in a low orbit. You can see the periapsis 156. So it's not picking up this um, Pacific Ocean station like I had expected. Yeah, let's wait in orbit and see if we get something better as far as timing is concerned. On the Venus side, hopefully that doesn't change things too much. I really need to put commutatrons on these orbiter. I, I'm copying the same orbiter model that I sent to Mars, and every time I forget to put the commutatrons on. Okay, well, oh, we've got communication support, it looks like. This Lunar Atlas 3 is right above us. Hopefully that'll work out. Okay, settling the fuel down, and ignition. Okay. Ignition is good. Yeah, not bad at all. Uh, that'll do. Let me turn off RCS so it doesn't mess it up. And let's add a dummy maneuver here. And add that alarm. Okay. We are recharging. Ooh. Uh, the earth doesn't look quite right. But definitely a good orientation. No problems there. And this is on its way. So, okay, let's do that docking contract. First docking. 
I don't even remember if it's the first docking. I, I don't think so. But anyway, first docking. Okay, so what we have here is a minimized docking target. And this is an Agena, basically. Uh, not really with the Agena tank, but close enough. And with the Agena engine. So here we go, throttle up, SAS is on. A single H1 engine at the bottom. So hopefully it'll work, but it's cheap anyway. Ignition. And launch. We do have fins for roll control. Well, the fins aren't doing roll control particularly well at this point, but that's more smart ASS's fault. Okay, excellent work. Separation. And I don't remember if this is the first time we're using an Agena. Maybe, maybe not. Um, it's got 14 ignitions left, so 15 total, this version of it. And it sure looks like we're just starting to collect data units on it. 100 minutes mean time before failure, though. Okay, we're barely in orbit, so maybe the next one should go higher. So, yeah. We'll keep this lower and have this one catch up, I guess. Uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Stop. Or something. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever way it works. Um, RCS on. Let's test the RCS. Let's go orbit retrograde and release the nose cone. Get these out. Okay. Very important to be able to decouple the nose cone, otherwise nothing will work. We'll have a bad sort of Gemini 9 situation. But plenty of Delta V to rendezvous and lots of ignitions. Downside, Arizine and N204 are limited because they're not used by the Agena. So that's our docking fuel. We need to be careful about using that. Okay, everything looks good. It's recharging. And I think what we should do is raise our orbit, though. Let's get into a nice circular-ish orbit, a little bit higher to make it easier to rendezvous with this. We could get the other one even higher, of course. And let's give the Agena one more ignition, you know, give it a workout. Okay, well that's definitely a higher orbit now. Okay, so I'm going to leave this be and launch another one in about a day to line up with it. Hmm, it occurs to me, looking for my docking target, that I might need to have another go at cleaning things up here. They sure do accumulate fast, don't they? This isn't even pro- uh, what you got? Debris. This is just the probe- the stuff with probe cores on it, I should say. Okay, this looks like a good deal. It's about- oh, yeah, it's about 1,700 kilometers ahead of us. Alright, ignition. And launch. I wonder why that says that's away from the target. This should be towards the target. It's a bit confusing, but let me focus on launching first. Okay, separation. Well, obviously, the timing as far as our closest approach distance was not great. Well, since it's behind us, we should really get into a higher orbit. Okay, that's quite high right there. Okay, uh, let's extend the solar panels. RCS, go retrograde. Well, let's try a second Agena ignition.
Okay, I had made a correction burn at Apoapsis and now I'm going to bring the orbit down so that our closest approach distance is correct. And our encounter should occur above North America, so that should be good for... I mean, communication should be fine anyway, but just in case. The nice thing about this arrangement is that either one can complete the rendezvous if it turns out the Agena engine fails. Lots of TWR though, when using the Agena. Okay, about 88 meters per second difference right now. That'll be a pretty quick burst of the Agena. All right, that'll be good enough for that. And we'll use the RCS for the rest, hopefully. Okay, seems like actually we have tons of RCS fuel, so that's good. Um, everything seems to be looking smooth. Smoother than I think the tugs are going to have it. They're much heavier. I might want to consider just using the Agena engines for the tugs. Not as good an ISP, but 15 ignitions is nice. And the tugs I have right now, they just have one ignition. They're, they're really just a transfer stage. They have a backup uh, two kil a set of two kilonewton thrusters to use the Airzine and N204 though. Maybe if I pump the fuel forward it'll be a little bit better on the balance. Because all the RCS fuel is in the back. Well, they're enabled. Oh! They're misconfigured. Only the back ones are configured properly. These forward ones are configured to nitrogen. Uh, that's why it doesn't feel like it's balanced. Okay. Well, that changes things a bit. Should be an acceptable closest approach distance. 0.2 meters per second is about my usual docking speed. At least in RO. There we go, RCS off, and it gave us credit. All right, so we did that deed. I don't know if we want to do anything else with these. Who knows, we might as well just leave them up here. They're at least somewhat functional. They have more ignitions, they have more Delta V. They could help out with something. And right now they count as just one craft, so that's not too bad. Okay, so aside from the Mars stuff and the Venus stuff, we don't have anything else on our list. I mean, of course, the crew count record and crew duration record, but I'm not aiming to do more than 14 days or to have three crew up. Let's go check the contract screen. Well, there is this first space station contract. Space for four crew. And we have to get two crew to it leave them for 30 days, bring them back. Hmm, it's very lucrative. Definitely worthwhile, but we'll have to do it in two years. And, you know, in that time, I also want to do a moon mission, a moon landing, lunar landing, not uncrewed. First human moon, human? First moon landing. Um... Well, are we going to have a pod that's capable of bringing three crew to the station so that we can get the crew count record of three? We might as well do three while we're at it, you know? And also, we need something that can contain four Kerbals. Now, we were unlocking Lunar Landing. Uh, we were unlocking... We unlocked Orbital Rock Tree here. But mature capsules is probably what we want. And this big Gemini passenger compartment is completely cheaty for the purpose of 10. We can fit 10 in there. Uh, but, you know, if they aren't picky, they aren't picky. Space station prototypes would also be good. We don't have enough science, though. 
I feel like what we need to do is get science first to get all this stuff. I mean, conceivably, we can just put two Gemini cabins on the station. In fact, we could just have one Gemini cabin on the station and then put another Gemini cabin with the crew, you know, bring the crew up. I wonder if it'll count that or whether it's not going to be happy because there's only capacity for two crew left on the station. Probably we should try and do it a little bit more legit than that. Um, probably. But space station prototypes needs more science. We will be getting more science with our Mars and Venus probes, though. I mean, those are going to be arriving. And we should get science from them. Hmm... But that's that's a little bit down the road. When are they arriving? We're making long-term plans here. I did start uh, making a launch pad for which will eventually become our 1,200 ton launch pad, but I'm in no hurry for that. Um, it looks like all the arrivals are in maybe the next half year, except for this one. So maybe we'll be able to get some science like that. Or maybe those will just be things that we've already done. I'm not sure. Have we actually sent something to Venus? I have so many questions. <laughs> um, uh, Venus. Yeah, we've sent stuff to Venus. Wow, look at all that. We've sent a lot of stuff to Venus already. So to some extent, it's going to be tough getting duplicates. But that was just a flyby mission. Most of these were high over. Once we capture into orbit, we should get uh, better cosmic ray science for instance mm -hmm. I mean the question is can we do both in the next two years um, the penalty is just the advance I probably won't be spending much it'll just give us stuff to do so that if we accidentally want to fulfill it we are not going to miss out on the contract okay well we'll make it our goal Two years for the first landing and two years for the first space station. Okay, and uh, to a large extent, I'm just waiting for technology here. We've got the lunar landing technology, improved hydrolox engines and stage combustion engines. Then we can get on with the business. Um, yeah, let me complete that. And to just wrap things up today, I'll launch the Regina, which is a uh, tug. It's using the RD-0109, hopefully. It might be configured to 0105 right now. It doesn't matter. We're probably going to replace those engines as soon as possible. I think the Agena would be one thing, but more likely we're just going to not have a tug and use the J2 instead. Okay, our final launch of the day is a big one. This is a Motron, not quite a Proton, definitely not a Proton, and not a Gotron, which we had before. It's different, but it still has six RD-253s at the bottom. And more or less, this is just a workout for the system without make uh, having a totally useless payload. So, ignition. <laughs> I don't 
don't suppose six is opposite of one, is it? No, they're next to each other, that's the problem. Okay. is why we needed to give this uh, a workout, like I said. These will have to burn for longer, which means they'll probably fail soon anyway. I mean, these are well past their rate of burn time now. That's 2 minutes and 28 seconds, I believe. Okay, we're down to two, and they're not placed particularly well. Well, these two are troopers. Almost. So close. So close to redeeming the engine type. Well, good thing this is basically just a bunch of fuel. But, unfortunately, to make orbit, it's going to use that fuel and it's only ignition. So this is all futile now. It can't reach orbit anymore. Um, yeah. I'm just gonna let this... Uh, I'm gonna let the engines run to get the data points. Um, and it looks like rd 0105s up there. I guess we'll accumulate data points on those. They'll do a retro burn. But, basically, this is all here now to satisfy test flights that, uh, you know, if it wants to kill engines, this is the time. Okay, sudden maneuver backwards. And separation. Insufficient avion. Oh, it's pretty close, though. But one of the engines is gone. Ah, uh, well, test flight did it. This light did it. Heck, I'm just gonna let this this engine run as long as it can. Because data points. Ah, that's vapor and feed lines. Alright, well, that's the end of this. Okay, it's gonna go pretty high up and then come crashing down. And it's, uh... Well... Everything else worked today, so I can't come... Well, not everything. We had that one probe decide to flip in, go into the ocean. But anyway, a reasonably successful episode anyway. And I sort of knew that this would help happen with test, test flight. And I wanted it to happen with this. Okay, so that's all done with. Next time, we will hopefully have better luck and we'll be unlocking new technologies, collecting some science from Venus and Mars, and um, we'll see what we can do with all of that. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.